Greetings, this is Charles Darwin, once again from the bed of the Polexi River near Glen Rose, Texas, and we're continuing our meeting with Glenn Kuban, an expert on the dinosaur footprints, and some of these are three-toed dinosaur footprints, and he's going to explain to us now how some of these footprints are reverse footprints. Okay, what's happening is that this infilling material is the secondary sediment that filled into the original track depressions, and we uh, determined that it was a, a firm clay that's very rich in iron. And as we saw in the other tracks, where it's, uh, the original material is a bluish gray, hard clay, but where it oxidizes on the surface or rust, essentially, it develops this rusty brown color. And the other thing that happens is it becomes, because of that oxidation, it becomes harder than the limestone. And so the erosion uh, acts more severely on the limestone, and it's essentially eroding around the tracks. So the track then ends up developing positive relief or being raised in appearance. So here you can see the infilling material. It seems to be higher. It is higher than the limestone, but you can see all the details, the outline of the infilling here, even the nice sharp claw. Could you trace that for us? Because it might not show up quite yeah, as well yeah. on the Okay, there's the, the claw. This is the middle toe. The other toe, the heel here, or the back of the foot. And this, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Sometimes the dinosaurs will impress their metatarsus or sole and heel, but it would come back normally like this, and we'll see that in, on the next print. So, but point other, out those three toes again. There's the middle toe, the claw, and the other toe. Okay. I mean, I can see them with my eyes. Yeah, but dinosaurs actually did have four toes, three large ones and a smaller one, and some of the tracks in line with this show that fourth claw or the helix. Just show that when you moisten the tracks. Sometimes the coloration features show up even more dramatically, but the way this light is now, it, it may not be showing up as well. Well, let's see some of the others here. Okay, now this is interesting because here the dinosaur has put weight on the back part of the foot, the metatarsus, and uh, so you get this elongated shape, but you can still see the three toes. It's, again, it's well infilled and it's becoming raised because the limestone is eroding around the hardened infilling material. So it's possible that a lot of these lumps that we see in the river right. basin may actually be raised footprints that we just have yes, not. That's what we've determined in many cases. Um, you can get clues because the infilling material is a smoother uh, clay-like material that has uh, uh, not as rough a texture as the limestone. So whenever you see a raised mound and you see some smoother texture like right here, these are two toes of a track. And sometimes if you, if you wet it, and often there's algae that's encrusted on the track, and when you clean off the algae, the shape of the toes and the rusty brown color, or where it's not oxidized, the, the grayish blue color shows up much better. Unfortunately, the light is pretty harsh right now. And then in line with these same tracks, we have another track that has a partial metatarsis impression, but here you see that fourth digit, actually it's the first digit on the foot, it corresponds to your big toe, but on a dinosaur, it's, the, uh, it's, it's quite a bit smaller than the other digits. It's normally, when the dinosaur's walking, it's held off to the side and, and, and towards the back. But when he puts weight on the back part of the foot, then it gets impressed. And even then, sometimes the mud comes back over it. But in this case, we see uh, several in a row that show this metatars I mean, this halix impression. Okay, so that's what on us would be the big toe, but it's actually the it smallest toe. It's to the big toe, but on a dinosaur, it's yeah, towards the back and rotated back. And uh, here you see, it's, always, it's on the inside of the foot. Here's the next step, that's the left, and here's the right. And you see again, it's on the inside of the foot, that's the helix. That's part of the metatarsis, and of course the three toes. Again, it's completely infilled, and because the infilling has rusted and become harder than the limestone, the erosion, it's eroding around the track, around, around the infilling, and causing the track to appear raised. Now, usually you don't see the, uh, the fourth toe, the helix because it's a little higher than the others, so the it's dinosaur... It's a little higher, so if he's walking on his toes as they normally do, it's often not impressed, or if it does impress, because it's small, the mud will often come back over that helix impression. But here you see several in a row that show real good indications. Yeah, that's a very good one. Now point out the uh, fourth toe again, right? Yeah, well, it's, it corresponds actually to the first digit, but there it is Okay. right there. And sometimes, again, when you wet it, you can see the outline more crisply, but that's it there, the helix, and then the three larger toes. Mm -hmm. So often these types of tracks are called tridactyl tracks, meaning three-toed, 
uh, but there are different types of three toed tracks. In the Plexi, the most common type is a theropod or two legged meat eating track, probably made by Acrocanthosaurus, whose bones are found in the area. Um, then there are a few cases of ornithopod tracks made by a two legged plant eater. They have wider prints with blunter digits. And then there are some of these metatarsal tracks where the metatarsus is very long that we now think might be made by another type of dinosaur, an ornithomimid. And of course we also have the fourth type, which are the big sauropod or brontosaur-like tracks. The back feet look like giant bear tracks and the front feet are more elephant-like. Now as far as the ecology that might have been going on at the time this was made, they're mostly three-toed dinosaur tracks and there are no or perhaps only one sauropod track here. Is that correct? In this no, layer? Well, on this particular level, but in the park, uh, which is a different track layer, there are many sauropod tracks, many of which are heading in the same direction, so they're mm -hmm. apparently traveling in a herd. But the ones that, uh, the three-toed dinosaurs that were here, uh, were not necessarily hunting, or at no. least they weren't hunting sauropods. No, they were doing something else. That, that where the theropod seems to have been following the sauropod, perhaps chasing it. Um, but in most cases, the, the three-toed tracks are going in all different directions. So the question would be, what are they doing here if they're not hunting the sauropods? And one idea is that they're looking for other things to eat, smaller creatures in the mud or shallow water like fish, snails, clams. Basically they would have a seafood buffet when the tide would go out, shrimp, all kinds of things. Because this was part of the Gulf of Mexico, edge of the Gulf of Mexico? The Gulf of Mexico. 110 million years ago. Right, and these metatarsal or heel impressed tracks are so common. Um, I, one idea I have is that the reason they're impressing their heels at times is that they're getting low to forage or feed on small ah. creatures in the water, shallow water. And if you're up on your toes, as most dinosaurs normally are, and then you crouch down even a little bit, you almost have to impress your heels. And I think that's what's going on. I see. So that's another example of how you can tell something about the living ecology of what was going on, rather than just the shape of the foot or uh, the evidence that the dinosaurs were right. here. You it, can tell what they were doing. Some idea about a, a different behavior or locomotor, uh, style of locomotion or walking. And so whenever you're studying dinosaur tracks, it's, it's, it's uh, interesting to try and figure out exactly what they were doing, how they were interacting. Unlike bones, which are just their dead remains, tracks are a record of their living behavior, which is well, I, one reason I find them fascinating and very fun to study. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you very much. And uh, this is Charles Darwin interviewing Glenn Kuban in the Paluxy River bed in near Glen Rose, Texas. Tally ho, and I'm in.